Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Is this yet another killer doll movie? Yep. Didn't James Wan also do Annabelle? Yep. Are they ever going to stop making this premise? As soon as it stops making money, so probably not. All this and more on Gory Story Time. Warning. Gory Story Time is a horror movie review show by a son and his dad who thought that letting his five-year-old watch scary movies was acceptable. If you are offended by horror or talk about blood and gore by a child, or if you don't want horror movies from the 60s through today spoiled, then there is a remote stuck in your couch cushion next to potato chip crumbs. Use it. And of course, parental discretion is advised. Why? You didn't use any. Shut up and start the show. Jason. I'm his co-host and father, Craig, and this week we're still not doing a series of four anything specifics. Uh, last week we did our most anticipated movie of the year, and we figured since we watched this one, we would also. This was another one that we were looking forward. It was, to. Uh, yeah, it was probably our second most. Like I basically. For whatever was coming out in 2023. Between Blood and Honey, this and the last movie. Yeah, well, Blood and Honey, they're not releasing in America, it so looks like. So I'll be taking a trip to Australia. Yeah, well, we could order on it, but it, they won't guarantee it'll play because it's in that different region format. But anyway, in case you can't see over my shoulder, the movie we're talking about is Megan. Um, in case you can't see over our shoulder, she can. Yeah, I... well, anyway, so uh, here's the premise. There's a doll that comes to life and kills. This is a new premise that has never been done before. <laughs> no, this little girl, her parents die in an accident. Um, and then she goes to live with her aunt who Gets works a at a robot. Well, she works at a company that's making toys and she's personally working on a realistic robot and decides to give it to her as a friend and see how it actually interacts with a real child. And it's an AI robot that has the ability to learn. And unlike most sci-fi or horror where they have that premise, she forgot that little part about encoding them not to kill. Yeah. Oops. I mean, that's about, I mean, that's the premise, right? Yes. All right, so uh, before we get into the behind the scenes and all that stuff, why don't we show you the trailer so you can see what we're talking about. I designed Megan to protect Katie from feeling lonely. She will recognize you as her primary user. And when you do that, you're going to pair with her. Crazy. It's insane, right? Oh, don't I look nice, biting my eyes, isn't it pure perfection? Megan. Your goal is to protect Katie from harm, both physical and emotional. One, two, three, four, I declare some more. I won't let anything harm you. I love her. Megan's not a person, Katie. You don't get to say that. Things that you can play with me, you better watch your back. The last thing that you hear will be my love. Megan, what are you doing? Couldn't sleep. Occupational hazard. <laughs> Got your full attention. Don't! Stop! What the hell is that? You should probably run. Don't you focus or we will push you down here. as much as we sweet. I won't let anything harm you ever again. Have I done something to upset you, Gemma? I know you think you're maximizing your objective function. 
Oh, really? Sugar and spice and everything nice. No, that's not what we're made of. <laughs> Megan? Baby doll skill. Don't provoke us or we will go. We'd have to shut her down. Jesus Christ, I thought we were friends. I have a new primary user now. Me. Did Megan do something bad? What's going on? What are you? I'm Megan. <laughs> Baby, don't provoke us or we will. <laughs> Well, all right. So that was a decent trailer. It's the thing that got us really hyped about the movie. Yeah. So um, let's see. Is there anything else you want to say before we explain uh, to them why we're really it. here? Yeah, go watch it. It definitely. is streaming. Some of the facts we have today are kind of like... Spoilery? Yeah. And oh, just so anyone knows, we are reviewing the unrated version mm. because... When we get into the facts, you'll find out why. But we also it was the intended version. That I'll put it that way. The unrated version is also streaming. Yeah. So um, watch the unrated version. We we're not here to like promote any specific streaming service. If there's one that's got it. You'll have to. Use you'll be that able to figure. You'll be able to figure it out. Um, if you have the option, watch this before we rip it apart for you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but otherwise. Let's explain why we're really here. See, people are under this weird impression that we review horror movies because we're fans of horror movies. And though we are, that's not what we're doing. See, what we do is we sell ourselves out to whatever company will sign us a big old check to promote their stuff. Yeah. And this time, by check, I mean like it was literally like a guy just drew this. Oh. And said it was valued at money, so I took his word for it. <laughs> uh, no, this week. Our, our fat, what is this? Bitcoin? Our uh, fat stacks of cash this week are coming in to promote this. Let's see. Gory Story Time is brought to you by Beating a Dead Horse, the game app where you look for dead horses and beat them with a stick until they shoot out money. Collect all you can and move to the next horse. Once you found all the horses, just go back to the first one and beat it again. It's nonstop making money doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. Beating a dead horse. Download it today. It's almost like the premise of these I mean, what? Yeah. And by Children Dealing with Death, the, the Children Dealing with Death series of books, including So Your Parents Had an Accident, and so your puppy liked to play in the road. And of course, so you forgot to put holes in the cover for the frog jar. Children dealing with death with, will help a child, you know, learn about death and how to discuss their feelings about it. Children dealing with death, helping children get over loved ones going under. All right. Now, let's get into the behind the scenes information, or as Jason likes to call it, the meat and beef. It was supposed or to be as I like to call it, the meat and beef. Because he was trying to be clever and say meat and potatoes using an old phrase and seeing as we're low carb. No. Potatoes See, are bad for me. No. Seeing as he's an idiot, he said meat and beef instead. Um, I'll go first? Yes. Okay. The film was originally shot as an R-rated movie until the no producers noticed while editing it it was close enough to PG-13, so they reshot a couple scenes to tone down the violence and believed that it was more effective than seeing the violence on screen. I hate when people lie and say that. Yeah. Jason Bloom cited Drag Me to Hell as a good PG-13 horror film that was effective. Blum. That's what I meant. Amy? Amy. Amy? Okay, well... Amy Donald play, uh, performed any of Megan's scenes that called for physical movement the puppet could not do. She also performed all of her own stunt work. Donald received movement coaching from Chad Brophy and Luke Hawker 
in portraying Megan's agility on set, Donald wore a static silicone Megan doll, a Megan mask, created by Moreau FX, and this was later replaced by a CGI version of Megan's face to match that of the animatronic. Actors dressed as Megan showed up to the L.A. Rams, L.A. Chargers NFL game on Sunday, January 1st to promote the film. They performed a dance routine midfield during halftime. Mm. Just a bunch of Megans dancing. <laughs> That's kind of cool. The song Megan pay- plays on the piano is Toy Soldiers, a 1988 hit for Martika. 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 And it was sampled by Eminem and called Toy Soldiers still. Um, but anyway... Adrian Moreau and Kathy Say of Moreau FX Studio created an animatronic puppet version of Megan used for dialogue and close-ups. This was also a se- there was also a second animatronic used for certain scenes as well as a possible stunt version that wasn't puppeteered. The animatronic Megan was puppeteered through a variety of techniques, including radio-controlled facial expressions performed by Adrian and Kathy in tandem, automated lip sync for the dialogue, and a puppeteer physically moving Megan's head and body. Hmm. Uh, Megan's voice is modeled in part from another famous artificial intelligence gone rogue, GLaDOS from Portal. Uh, this is most notable during scenes when Megan's voice is auto-tuned in order to sound glitchy. <clears throat> the idea for the film began when James Wan watched Chucky. No, I'm kidding. Uh, well. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Couldn't help it. When his uh, Atomic Monster Productions was brainstorming ideas and chose one about a killer doll. Although he had produced Annabelle about a killer doll, he said, this concept is about embracing technology too much and relying too much on it and what happens when technology runs amok. It's a commentary on the world we live in, and it feels relevant. Jason Blum stated that the film would have would have black comedy elements, which is one of the reasons Gerard Johnstone was chosen to direct. We needed someone who could do the thrills and set pieces, but also had a cheeky approach. On a budget of $12 million, principal photography began in June of 2021 taking place in Los Angeles, California, and Auckland, New Zealand, the suburbs of Auckland were utilized to lend the film a Denver, Colorado feel. Filming was completed in mid, uh, by mid-August, right before a COVID-19 lockdown occurred in New Zealand. The next fact is going to actually contradict the first one a little bit. Uh, when the first trailer went viral on TikTok with teenagers, Universal Studios retooled it to appeal to a younger audience. See, it wasn't, oh, it's already so close to PG-13. You could see in the trailer that they planned on an R. There were certain things. And because it went viral on TikTok, they're like, ooh, a bunch of teenagers want to go. Let's take their money. Um, and it worked. Yeah. Your turn. Ten. A technician uses a pen to track Megan's eye movement, the way the scene is presented through Megan's POV is very similar to the montage scene where Officer Murphy is reconstructed in RoboCop. In post-production, Amy Donald's physical performance as Megan was enhanced by digital visual effects by New Zealand-based effects studio Weta FX. Speaking about the design of Megan, Gerard Johnstone stated that uh, he looked to screen icons from the 50s like Audrey Hepburn, Grace Kelly, and Kim Novak for inspiration, but wanted some 70s naturalism to counteract her synthetic nature. So the hairline is 100% Peggy Lipton. Hmm. Uh, Megan stands for Model 3 Generative Android. Uh, Kimberly Grossman voiced Megan during production. It wasn't until later Jenna Davis's voice was added. However, during the film... Crossman's voice could still have been used, especially for the scenes where Megan got angry and used profanity towards Gemma. Hmm. While Gemma is going over the pitch presentation for Megan, she states that it uses an A17 bionic processor. This is a naming convention used by Apple for its mobile processors, implying that there is a collaboration with Apple 
to provide processors for the robot. While Akella Cooper said that the original body count was much higher with the film being gorier, you can find the unrelated version released on the Peacock streaming service and the Blu-ray release. Okay, well, I guess we gave there a shout-out to where it was. Whatever. Not a sponsor. No. Uh, Megan drops to all fours to chase Brandon down, like likely because of how replicating bipedal, bipedal movement at a high speed is still a problem for real-world robotic scientists. Yeah, basically, they could make the thing run on all fours, not on all twos, or not up on two. Um, several sequences make reference and homage to Child's Play. Several of the focus shots on Katie are inspired from frames of Andy in some scenes from that movie. Even the battle between Gemma and Megan is inspired by the climax of Child's Play where Karen Barkley confronts Chucky. Yeah. Barclay. Uh, Kurt had been stealing secrets from his company and was likely the reason why Funky's rivals were able to produce cheaper knockoffs of their products. He had succeeded in copying Megan's data files. It's very likely he has already sold those files to another company, which means there's a whole legion of Megan duplicate dolls being made. Then at the end of the film, Elsie, uh, the digital home assistant, turns and looks out the door, indicating Megan may have uploaded her programming to the Internet. Both of these things leave the door wide open for a sequel. Lydia was originally killed by Megan during the rampage at Funky Toys, as she had upset Katie by making her cry during a therapy session. When the film was recut to PG-13, her death scene was removed from the final cut, and she ultimately survives, though her sudden disappearance from the movie was never explained. Megan making plans that the short term that work short term but fall apart later, such as murdering Brandon or planning to render. Gemma quadriplegic, reflect that she's functionally a child who's still learning. While she's incredibly intelligent, Gemma provided her functionally no support or direction and just expected her to figure things out on her own. All right. Now, uh, before we get into our favorite and least mm -hmm. favorite scenes, we should let you know what Rotten Tomatoes is. Yes. Rotten Tomatoes is a website that just is an aggregate for a bunch of critics where they take all the critics and that give it a positive or a negative review. They divide it into those two piles and tell you the percentage of positive reviews. They don't, t you know, sometimes it's a C, but that's still passing. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so, and they also have a section where the people get to vote. And unfortunately, we're not listed as critics. But no, we're not. What do the critics that aren't us rate this movie? They have this at a 93%. And considering it's a horror movie and such, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. The people, for some reason, have it at 78. And I have to say, I don't approve. No. I think, I don't, I think it should be somewhere between the two in the 80s, personally. But that's my... That kind of gives away where I'm going to... Right, right. <laughs> um, but uh, since we liked this movie, what was your least favorite thing or scene? Hmm. Uh, I don't remember his name. The boss. Okay, the boss of Funky Toys? Yes. Okay. His very bad and stilted acting. Only him, by the way. I don't think it was stilted. I think he was playing, like... A guy who doesn't know, you, you know how to act. People, no, you know those people that when you meet in real life and they're like, "Hi," and they seem, and it, it, you could tell they're just fake people. He's playing that. Uh, maybe accidentally. No, I, I believe that it that, was bad acting. No, in that it wasn't. scene. He was playing that kind of person. Well, <coughs> not well. I mean, it w landed as exactly that type of person. I didn't like him. All right. Well, my least favorite thing is the fact that they bothered cutting it down for a PG-13 in the first place. When you film a movie to be rated R, you make it gory. And then to show in the trailer, like, obviously they cut it because it was a Green Band trailer, but you're like, oh, I'm going to get to see that when I go into the theater. 
And then a month later, right before the release, they're like, by the way, PG-13, haha, you don't get to see that. It bothers me. I don't mind if something's written for PG-13 if it's and done well. And then has an unrated version anyway, but like... Yeah, where they're like, hey, let's put this in, but it was filmed completely as an R-rated movie first. And we could have gotten some gorier scenes and bloodier action well, no, sequences. Well, like no, like, we saw the unrated. We saw those scenes. And, I, yeah, so I'm nitpicking because we watched the better version. Uh, what was your favorite thing? Or scene. The very first thing that happens in this movie is my favorite thing, which is it starts and it's an ad for a toy. And it's like, ah. And you don't want to spoil that. I get it. Like. It immediately sets a sarcastic tone. No, like, actually, I don't mind because it's the first 20 seconds in the movie. All right. Literally, it starts and there's a dead dog. Or there's a dog. And they're like, ah, you have Ralphie or whatever his name is. And. He's your companion. You love him to the very end, and he's dead. But now we've got this toy that will replace all of the dead things in your life. And it's like, no, no, no. I mean, that's, that's... not exactly it. But no, yeah. I'm see, I'm not ruining it. I mean, literally, I'm, just, I'm not doing it well. Wouldn't have done that. Well, but it was great. It was amazing. It was, but, yeah, like, it, it's such a good way to start this movie. Yeah, we were, we rewound it. Like, wait, did they just really? Start I like do this, this? Um, but anyway, all right. My favorite thing. I mean, honestly, I think we were a little hard on uh, the Child's, Child's Play, Play remake. reboot. Yeah, rightfully so. But I think this took the idea of the AI doll and everything, and did it much better. I think this is what the Child's Play reboot should have been. Then maybe we would have hated it less. I mean, they still made that ugly thing Chucky, and Ugh. it just didn't work for me. And I love Mark Hamill, don't get me wrong, but nah. <clears throat> like, he's just not the voice of Chucky. Yes, my favorite thing about this is it's better than the reboot of Child's Play that we didn't like in the first place. I mean, we thought it was all right. Yeah. The problem was this, they said it was Chucky. These guys didn't say it was Chucky. No. Everyone else was like, you wish you were Chucky. And then it's like, well, they did a better job than the reboot did. So So this is a better not Chucky than the Chucky not Chucky was. Chucky not Chucky? Yes. Uh-huh. All right. Um, on a scale of one to ten. Eight and a half. Definitely eight and a half. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go eight. But... Like, it's really good. It, I'm glad that it's in the house and can be watched again sometime. I'm glad that, like, 93%. Like, I don't agree with it, but and I like that. A little interesting side story quickly. Uh, his fiance <laughs> couldn't wait to see it after seeing the trailer. And then... She got me We were going to go see it in the theater, and it didn't end up happening. And as soon as we didn't go, she gets these weird attitudes. And she's like, well, then I'll never watch it. And then when we put it on, she's like, I'm not watching it. I've lost any interest. Until that first she, scene. She saw the first scene and then basically sat there and just watched the entire movie with us, gr like begrudgingly. Oh, yeah. And then enjoyed it. And she's like, Like she watched it in spite of us? She's like, I didn't want to sit here and watch this. Right. But she couldn't bring herself to leave the room. So she would probably rate it higher than eight. <laughs> probably, probably. She probably agree with them. But anyway, uh, anything else you want to say before we start wrapping up? Go watch this. I know we ruined it for you, but go watch it again. Yeah, and watch the unrated version. Yeah. Because I can't speak for the one that we didn't watch. I mean, that's the version that got this. Oh, was it? Yeah, so. It was the unrated version? No. Oh. Like, this is for the PG-13 version. I didn't even think to look for a separate rating for I wonder if there, is, there sh should there be, because it usually makes a difference. But anyway, all right. Uh, now let's get the stuff up on the side that we yes. usually shout out every week. Do, do, do. Sure. Uh, you can go to Fact TV. You can watch the show on Fact TV channel 1082. Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. and Fridays at 7 p.m. 
Uh, you can like us <coughs> on Facebook, and like I say every week, don't just like Corey Story Time. That's cool. We're over a thousand people, a thousand likes yeah. from different people. That's awesome. But also like Fact TV. You know, they Definitely. produce a lot of cool local content. Yes. Uh, you can go to factdate.com and watch a bunch of back episodes of this as well as thousands of hours of entertainment and other things like board meetings and such. I mean, we wouldn't call board meetings entertainment, but they're educational for the locals. I said and. Oh, you said and. I did say and board meetings. Um, And you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Craig Jakes, all one word, all lowercase. I'm at Jiggly Firm Brain. I only tweet things that he says that I find amusing in or out of context, but usually out of context. And, you know, check us out on uh, YouTube. Just type in Gory Storytime, and two different YouTube channels will pop up, mine and Fact TV. And why don't you give them both a like and subscribe and notification bell, hit that. Whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yes. Because for the same reason, just hours and hours of content. So We've much. got our so one-hour, 100th episode special, our two-hour, or an hour and a half, 200th episode special. Yes, yes. We've got some sketches, whatever, like... Go check all that out. And until next time. Until next time, I've been your host, Jason. And his co-host and father, Craig. And, and Sweet, Sweet Dreams. dreams.